I really like this watch. I, I think it offers incredible value for money. Now, I bought this from the Timex website. Uh, if you've watched my unboxing of this, uh, the watch, I originally wanted to buy the black dial one. But the black dial they only do uh, in quartz here in England for some reason, I don't understand why. They only offered the green one in mechanical one. Uh, and it, the retail price for this watch was £149. But at that time they had um, a massive sale on it. I don't understand why they were getting rid of this watch because it seems to be a very popular watch. Uh, but I actually picked it up for £76 from Timex, brand new. So literally half price. And um, I immediately picked it up. Uh, I also picked up two other watches as well, two other Timex watches, because they were having a, a great sale. Like anyone who's, who's wanting to buy a Timex watch, if it's on their website and it's not on discount, now normally they'll give 10% discount um, and you can get 20% discount. So just wait until that a discount comes up and then you can buy your watch for a little bit cheaper. But I was just, I think I was just lucky that day when it was on, on sale. Now um, on the website now, it's not available. Now people are selling these on eBay for a hundred plus pounds now. Um, so really baffles me why they were discounting it so heavily at that time. So it's a very vintagey inspired watch. Uh, I know a lot of these uh, brands nowadays are going back to their old catalog and they're bringing out a lot of vintage inspired watches from their catalog. And I think this one is really true to what it is. Now, uh, apparently it's like a reissue of a watch they call the Camper. I don't know much about that one. Um, it's harking back to the 60s and 70s. Now, most people, if they want like a, a field watch, most watch enthusiasts will actually buy this one. This is the Hamilton Khaki. Uh, both watches, now Timex does have a little bit of a military background to it. They, do, they did supply watches to the military, but I think the Hamilton is more well known for being uh, a military watch. But if you look at the two, they look incredibly similar. Now the Hamilton is 40 millimeters and um, the, the Timex is 36 millimeters. Now, for some people, they might scoff at that and think, oh, 36 millimeters is too small. But for me, I like it. I like that size a lot. It fits my wrist really well. It's a fantastic everyday watch. You, I can just throw on, don't have to worry about it. It feels really light and it's just ideal. It's 41 millimeters lug to lug. Uh, it's 10 millimeters thick and it has this uh, acrylic crystal. Now again, a lot of people say, oh, acrylic, I don't want to have an acrylic crystal. It scratches like anything and they prefer a sapphire. I actually quite like acrylic. I like the fact that it's gonna get scratched up. It's gonna give the watch some history to it. So when it gets scratched, it'll be like, okay, I remember when it got scratched, it did this, I was doing that. It just gives the watch a, a history. I think the scratches give a watch history and I like the fact it's gonna get scratched up. I'm not gonna use poly watch to get any scratches out. I'm just gonna keep it as it is and that's it. So I, I know some people will even change the uh, the sapphire to the, the glass to a sapphire, but I'm not gonna do that. And besides that, I'll just like cost too much. Now it comes on this green um, strap with a white strap, now a white line. I don't like the white line. I wish they did, they'd only just done it in a green uh, strap, uh, nylon strap, it would have looked a lot better. Uh, it is a very nice strap. It, it's very hard at the moment. I haven't been wearing it on this strap because I don't like the, the white stripe. Uh, I have been wearing it on this uh, for the past couple of days because I just wanted to make sure that I give it a go. Uh, I've actually been wearing it on a NATO strap even though I'm not, not a big fan of NATO straps because I don't like the fact that when you put the, the strap on it's too long and then you've got to bend it over and it just gives the back of the watch a, like a big, a big butt really. Um, that's the way I describe it. I don't like it. And also when you, ha when you have the, um, the bottom edge as well of the NATO strap, it just makes the watch a bit thicker because it, it, uh, it rests on the, on the bottom. So I always cut the bottom strap off and then I always cut the, the end of the, the strap as well just to make it all line up so it's not having that big butt at the end of it. So I've been wearing it on that strap and I'll probably will go back to that strap after, after this video. But as I said, the, this strap is, I think the quality of this strap is really good. It comes with quick release pins, so it's easy to change uh, your strap if you wanted to, or leave it on this strap. Uh, and it's just very good quality. Again, 70, what is it, 76 pounds? It's fantastic value for money. I can't think of many other watches, uh, mechanical watches at that price. Now, um, I think the biggest competition uh, this watch has is the Vostok, uh, but 
they've creeped up a lot in price. Now, I remember when I bought my Komandersky, it was around about 30, 35 pounds many, many years ago. Now, you can still find them at that price, but when you start factoring the shipping costs, which is around about 12 to 15 pounds, then you've got import duties and so on. It's creeping up to the same price as this watch, and I think this watch is a lot, lot better. Uh, it's much better made. It's stainless steel case. Now, I don't think it is 316L stainless steel. I think it's 306. From the feel of it, it's, it's just, it feels too light to be 316, and it actually doesn't say on the back either. So on the back case, uh, you've got um, a watchmaker established 1885, uh, 1855, sorry, I can't see too well through the viewfinder. Stainless steel, so you see it just says stainless steel. It doesn't actually say it's 316L. Uh, then you've got the MK1 or Mark uh, 1 collection. And then you've got the serial number, and then it's got 18 millimeter lugs. And it is 50 meters water resistant. Now again, I think a lot of people may think that 50 meters is not enough. Um, they wouldn't take it into water. I would take this into water. I've taken another 50 millimeter, uh, 50 meter watches into the sea and into a pool. I've never had any issues with it. So it doesn't have a screw down crown. Um, so I know a lot of people would be a bit wary of that, but take your watch off when you go through the pool. I don't get that. Why, why do you want to take a watch when you're swimming? So it's a mechanical movement. So it's hand winding every, I got, you got to hand wind it. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it does have a really nice uh, winding uh, mechanism to it. And that's, that's to the max. Uh, I th I'm not sure what movement is actually in this watch. Uh, Timex don't actually stay on the website. Now, people have said it's either a Miyota or a Seagull. Uh, I had somebody in my comment sections when I did the unboxing, they said it's a Seagull movement, but they didn't say which Seagull movement it is. But it's running fine. It's actually, I set it, these two watches together yesterday at the same time. And the Timex is actually running a little bit faster. I think it's 10 seconds faster than the Hamilton. Um, so it's, it's a new watch, it'll probably bed in. I've only had it for about a month now, I think. So I've been wearing it on and off. It hasn't really got that much wear, but I do tend to pick it up um, whenever I just wanna do something um, that I don't have to care about. I need to know what time it is and I'm gonna do something like, don't have to worry about it being damaged because it's so cheap. I just think it's a great little watch. Now, when I did the unboxing, I did feel the back of it and it did feel really, really rough. But it's kind of, doesn't feel as rough as it did that day, especially down here. Here it does. But I don't know if that's just sort of bedded in or it's just got dirt in there that it's sort of bedded into all the marks. Um, but it doesn't feel as rough as it did before. But th it does have a few things that I don't like. Uh, the, one is the loom on this is absolutely dreadful. They may as well not have put loom on this at all. Uh, it literally lasts for uh, like two minutes and then it's just, it's, it's faded completely. Uh, they may as well not have just put loom on You've got loom pips around the, the, the numerals, like one, two, three, four, and so on. You can see the loom pips there. But um, really, really poor loom. Uh, it's got a loom pip uh, on the top of the second hand. That glows for a little bit longer, but it, again, within a few minutes, it's all gone. And um, the hands has loom, but it fades so so quickly. I do like the uh, the hands on this. They're very basic, very easy to read. At night, maybe not, but during the day, they, they have a like. It's got a grey. I'm quite glad they've done a, like a grey hand to it, um, and not like a silvery one where they, where it reflects the light. This is just an ideal um, field watch. I think it's more true to a field watch than most other watches there are. I mean, like the Hamilton, it is true to it, it is for, but they've increased the size of the Hamilton. It's now 40 mil. I think the original one was about, was about probably the same size as 36 or 38. And it, it's got completely um, brushed uh, case. I like that. I like the fact they've only gone with one finish to it. A lot of people, a lot of companies, they'll do like a chamfered edge with a polished edge to it, and they or they do a a polished um, bezel edge to it. I don't like that. I think stick to one uh, finish and leave it as that. And I'm glad they've done this uh, brush uh, finish to it. The brushing is obviously not as good as most of the watches, but you know, it does me. I really, really like this watch. Um, it's something that I think. Um, 
It's definitely going to stay in my collection. Um, it's probably going to stay until it, it actually just dies. Uh, the Hamilton is a watch which I would just sort of sell um, if it came to it. Uh, it's not something that I'm going to sort of stay in my collection for forever and ever. But this one, I think definitely, and I'm actually quite s sorry that I didn't buy another one. Um, if I'd had, if I know now what I knew then, I probably would have bought another another one as well, just as a spare, as a knock around, or gift to a family member. Um, I just think it's a great little watch as a gift. Somebody who's younger, who's getting into their first watches. Somebody who's not a collector, uh, who doesn't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on a watch. I think it's an ideal watch. And if you can pick one up at a cheap price, if you pick one up for under 100 pounds, um, you'll be laughing. You, you'll really enjoy the watch. It's a great watch and it's very robust from what I've been using it for. It's great. Can't recommend it highly enough. Definitely pick one up if you can.